Good afternoon, my name is Christian Ramos and my friend Leah Cron. Today we are talking about speed recovery and awareness. All you think this presentation is to understand the basic aeronautical flight, to know the awareness scene of speed and how to recover from it. I explain how a speed affects an airplane in flight. Introduction. To understand stall and speed, you need to understand the different basics of aviation. So ask the different for actually or any play what a star is and how it can lead into a speed. The different forces actually in a play is lift, weight, thrust and drag. All constantly affecting airplane in flight. This is an example lift, gravity of weight, drag and thrust, all these forces are equal when the airplane is unsolidated. If different forces actually on the plane is proportional to the opposite reaction, thrust versus drag and lift versus weight. But not in principle. As the speed of the flow increases, the pressure has to decrease proportionally. Air is a flow, so this explains how lift is generally over in airflow. In this image, we can see when the speed in the top increases, decreases in the bottom, so the airplane up. What is angle of the attack? Angle of attack is the angle uh, with the shot line meets the relative winds. The shot line is a line drive from the leading edge to the trailing edge on the wing. In essential, the angle of attack is literally the angle you are flying the plane up or down. Depending on your angle of attack, you need more or less lift to surface or source a change. This is an example of angle of attack. This is the shot line when the angle of attack is, is more the airplane occasionally stall. And now my friend talking stall. So what is a stall? A stall occurs when the lift factor of a plane is less than the angle of attack. A stall will cause the plane to stop moving upwards and start going downwards, simply because there's not enough lift to handle such a high angle of attack. So simply put, um, a stall occurs when your angle of attack is now too much for the actual lift. So, you know, uh, thinking about it in regular terms, if the plane's going upwards and you go too far upwards, it's not going to have enough lift to keep pushing it upwards. It's going to end up moving right back down, hence a stall. So you can see here in this photo, uh, looking at it, that during regular flight, you can see the air moving over the top and the bottom of the airfoil and creating the wingtip vortices, generating all the lift and moving naturally. But when a stall occurs, you can see the angle of attack has increased and the uh, flow of air is no longer on the airfoil. It's no longer creating that low pressure zone. And uh, that's when a stall occurs and it'll start to move back downwards. So what is a spin? A spin occurs if a stall is not recovered from properly. When one wing turns but the other remains, uh, remains stable, a spin will occur. So you can see here uh, this forward view of the plane. So if the left wing is less stalled than the right wing, um, then when a plane ends up in a stall and starts moving downwards, if one is more stable than the other, your plane will start to spin while moving downward, as you can see here. So how do you avoid a spin? Avoiding a spin starts by recovering from a stall properly or just avoiding a stall altogether. But what are the warning signs of a stall? The warning signs for a stall are as follows. If you notice a reduction in control effectiveness, a lack of sound of air flowing into the fuselage, vibrations, buffeting, or an uncontrolled pitching, then likely your plane will stall out shortly. So how do you recover from a stall? The main thing in recovering from a stall is to reduce the angle of attack. This is to regain control of the plane and start the flow of lift again. You must be careful not to pitch down too erratically, as this can lead to an even worse situation. So to recover from a stall, it's much easier than most people would think. It's not that your engine is dying out, it's just that the plane doesn't have enough lift. Recovery from a stall is just as easy as pitching the plane back down so lift can be generated again and the plane can continue moving as normally intended. So how do you recover from a spin if you end up in one? 
Um, to recover from a spin is much more complicated. You will need to first close the throttle completely. This is to eliminate power and decrease the loss of altitude. So the reason you would do this first is when you're in a spin, you're moving downwards and your plane is just spinning rapidly. You want to close the throttle to ensure that um, no longer is the engine pushing, now it's just a free fall. So you can move on to the next step. Next is to neutralize the ailerons, determine the direction of the turn, and apply full opposite rudder. Um, so when you're in that free fall and you're moving downwards and spinning, you want to figure out which direction is the plane turning, which wing is more stalled, and then you want to find that and apply full opposite rudder to regain control of the plane. Um, when the rotation slows, you slowly move the elevated position back to a neutral stance. Once the stall is broken, the spinning will stop, and then you can apply throttle and lift after reaching a neutral gliding position. So stalls and spins can be quite a scary phenomenon to see, but uh, if handled properly, are just as easy as any other pilot's maneuver. In normal flights, you won't normally run into spins, but that doesn't mean it's impossible to make a mistake. Not only the warning signs of the stall could easily prevent a spin, but also knowing how to recover from these incidences is just as important. Uh, I am Liam Crank, this is Christian Ramos, and uh, this is our introduction to spin and stall awareness. Thank you.